comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So I shaved my hair today. I don't know why it's taken me so long. I haven't shaved it properly in maybe like eight months, nine months, ten months. Who fucking knows? Who cares? But it is fucking liberating. I feel free again. I know what it feels like to be a chick taken off their bra now. I can finally relax and be comfortable. I don't have to pretend my titties are all perky and shit. I can just have them out. I can just have my bald head out there in the fucking world, just free, unrestrained, and comfortable. When I shaved my head today as well, I made the same sound as a lady makes when she takes off her bra after a big day at the office. (sighs) And then I rubbed my head the same way ladies rub the side of their tit (laughs) now that they don't have a piece of wire sticking into the side of it. Feels good. I don't think I'm going to grow it back again. I'm burning my bra. I am part of the feminist movement now. I look a little bit like a dyke too. I might just grow it like a centimeter or something like that, just so it looks like there's a bit of coverage, so it looks like I can grow my hair. It's better to have a shaved head and people look at it and go, oh, he looks like he could grow his hair if he wanted to, than have like a sort of head of hair and people are like, that's not going to last much longer. Who's he trying to fool? I can see right through to his skull. The only thing is, I thought I had a better shaped head. Last time I shaved my head, I thought it wasn't too bad. This time I'm like, "Mm, I'm not sold. Does your skull change shape? Does it get bigger the smarter you get? (laughs) Because I think that's what happened. I think I got heaps smarter and I think my head grew. My forehead in particular. The frontal lobe is a lot larger than I thought. And I've got a fucking pimple on it. Who gets a pimple and goes bald at the same time? It's a fucking nightmare. My hormones must be just all over the fucking shop at the moment. I think balding has something to do with too much testosterone, doesn't it? Or is that just something some sad bald guy made up? Because that's not how I feel at the moment. I don't feel like I have too much testosterone. I don't feel like I have so much testosterone that the only way it can escape from my body is through my head by pushing my hair follicles out. But it does feel good having a shaved head. Fuck, it does. I feel like I've taken control of my own destiny again. I feel like my whole life was just being controlled by the whims of hair loss and too much testosterone. And now, I don't give a fuck. My hair's like half a millimetre long now, and if it falls out, who cares? I won't even notice it. I'll just inhale it or some shit. I can't put any fucking weight on now, not even a gram, because I cannot look like a fat, bald cunt. You can be one of the two. You can either be fat or bald. You can't be both. What wins, actually? A shredded, bald guy or a fat guy with luscious fucking hair? Luscious hair. What do you choose? Because the fat guy can lose weight and he'll still have hair. So he'll have the double then. Like, he won't lose weight because he's a fatty and he's got hair. He doesn't need to lose weight. Would I rather be fat and have good hair or bald and shredded? It would depend on how thick my hair is and how fat I am. Like if I have a pretty big gut and some titties, but I've got dreadlocks, I'll take that. I'll just change my whole fucking personality. Anyway, fuck, that was too long. Let's get in to Fucked Up Friday. It's another Friday and we've got another fucked up story coming at you. If you would like to send in your own Fucked Up Friday story to be read out on this podcast, hit me up on social media on Boyle Comedy on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, or you can just send it in to my email on boylecomedy at gmail.com. Anyway, let's get straight into this week's Fucked Up Friday. This week's Fucked Up Friday comes all the way from Sydney, Australia. This is a lady this time. It's from one of the lady listeners this week. We had Stifler last week, so it's going to be good to hear from one of the ladies. So this story was sent in by Abby in Sydney. Abby was actually the name of my first crush ever when I was eight or nine. She was a crush for like seven years, so the name Abby always holds a special place in my heart. So anyway, let's get to it. When I was 19, I was going to the cross at least twice a week. By the cross, she's talking about King's Cross in Sydney. That's where Butter Bing is. That's where I got fly kicked by the stripper. The story I told you yesterday, King's Cross, same place. 
So I was going to the cross at least twice a week to eat as many pills and do as many shots as I could at World Bar, a classic pre-lockout venue. Yes, the World Bar is actually called Wonderland now, and it's the place I did my last gig in Australia before I left. It's on my Instagram where I got heckled like fuck. That's the World Bar, now it's Wonderland. It was a fucking sweet place to get fucked up. Anyway, one night, my girlfriend and I, along with some random guy we met, left when the club shut and decided to buy another pinger on our way out for the train ride home. For those of you not in the know, a pinger is Australian slang for ecstasy. You can also call it a fucking goog, which is my personal favourite. Get on the googs. Buying the pinger obviously led to not getting on the train, but climbing trees into people's backyards. And my friend and the random dude trying to fuck in an alley while I muzzed out by myself. When I was alone, I thought I could abseil down a rock by holding, <laughs> by holding on to a long piece of grass. <laughs> and I grazed my ass. I didn't even feel it until my friend told me there was blood pouring down my leg. We end up deciding to go skinny dipping in the harbour. We jumped in naked, but the tide was so low, we couldn't reach the ladders to climb back out. We were stranded naked in Sydney Harbour at 6am. Determined not to be on the news getting pulled out of the harbour by a helicopter, I swam 500 metres, climbed onto some random boat, climbed over a fence and back onto land. The problem was, it was now sometime between 6.30 and 7am on a Thursday morning and I had to walk almost a kilometre through the city, wet, naked and with blood pouring down my leg to get to my clothes and help my mates out. That must have been a fucking sight. I bet you there was a few dudes going, thank fuck I caught the early ferry this morning. They probably still think about it. It may not have been my proudest moment, but I did have fun winking at all the businessmen and women walking to work. Yes, that's the way you play it. You go, yeah, Mr. 9 to 5, Mrs. 9 to 5. What are you doing? You go into your fucking desk job. I'm just walking through the city fucking nude. I'm enjoying my life. I'm living my life. Yeah, there's blood streaming out of my asshole, but that's the price you pay for fun. That is the way you play it. You did well there. You wink, you keep eye contact and fucking make them look away. So I did have fun winking at all the business men and women walking to work who either were stoked that they got to see a naked teen or thought I was an absolute mess. Here's a photo below of the greys on my ass. Cheers. I'll tell you this right now. The greys is less a greys and more a fucking road rash. It covers her entire fucking ass cheek. It is a massive fucking greys. And there's a little bit of action on her inner thigh on her left leg. But once you look past all this, she's got a fucking great ass. So those 9 to 5 is fucking lucked out. Thank you, Abby, for sending in that fucked up Friday, you wild mess. That's it for tonight. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you the fuck later.